Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Taklai and um, today I thought I would um, I would give you a brief uh, update uh, about the state of affairs in uh, um, in the light of the the so-called um, agreement. Um, I think so, um, I would I would call it a fake um, agreement in, in Pretoria between. Between the the Tigray People's Liberation Front, as this is named um, in the document, and the Ethiopian regime, uh, but uh, uh, before I do that, some some words of um, some words of uh, um, kind of housekeeping. Uh, so I'm I'm doing some sort of experiment with my. Uh, recording um, devices, and I, I, I suspect that the the sound quality uh, might not be up to scratch. And uh, if that is the case, um, uh, you've been warned. <laughs> so uh, apologies for that in advance. Uh, uh, we're trying to um, to set up um, stuff for, for um, what we have planned to to do with uh, the channel and all that. And um, as always, it, it, it takes a bit of um, uh, tweaking and tinkering with um, with devices and all that. And I might not have got everything right in in the, um, in the first run. Uh, so um, hopefully you will bear with me in that respect. So um, in terms of um, the um, developments. Um, following the agreement, I, I think I would like to, to talk about two things. Number one is what are the what has changed um, now that the the two parties have ostensibly um, agreed uh, for for, um, for a peaceful resolution, uh, to, to put it um, charitably, and and um, also I, I would um, I would like to say a few words about what we know how about how the the actual agreement uh, was um was arrived at um what exactly happened what were the the technique and the tricks that the the observers and especially the united states um through its um, envoy uh, mike hammer uh, deployed to to kind of arm twist of the two parties to um to put their their pen on the paper uh so, in terms of the, the first, in terms of um, updates uh, following the um, following the signing of the agreement, um, I think the one um, the one very I would say major point in the in the agreement is about the, the nature of disarmament of the Tigray Defense Forces, uh, right? And um, from what I have been able to understand, the the, the commanders of the two parties, Tadde um, Sawareda from from Tigray, the, is the commander of the Tigray Defense Forces. Um, of the, um, he's a two Tigray Defense Forces. I have to say because there is there is there is a distinct uh, um, likelihood that um, they would be disarmed. Um, but anyway, status order from Tigray, and then um, what would the Ethiopian counterpart with that um, ludicrous name, um, title, uh, Field Marshal Bruhanu, I believe. Um, so him representing either Ethiopia or Eritrea, depending on how you want to read the situation. I would like um, to say representing Eritrea because uh, we we know now that um, Ethiopia. Um, doesn't do anything without the the blessing of Eritrea. So even though people are supposedly representing Ethiopia, actually they are they are messengers for for Eritrea. Um, I would say, but that's that's um, uh, that's beyond uh, the scope of what I want to talk about. So in terms of disarmament, uh, they, there have been discussions um, back and forth and um, and points of disagreement uh, and actually sometimes very acrimonious uh, back and forth between the two parties in, in Kenya, in Nairobi, from um, uh, what I have been able to gather from very reliable sources. And um, the point of contention um, is about the uh, modality of um, disarmament. 
so the preference of the Ethiopian regime is the total disarmament of the Tigran Defense Forces, um, light and heavy weaponry and everything uh, to totally relinquish everything that they have to the Ethiopian Defense Forces. So essentially to, to, to deprive Tigray of any any kind of armed force um, uh, and so the the Tigran representative uh, Tadis has strongly disagreed with that and uh, his uh, um, his reason his rationale for disagreement with that uh, number one Tigray doesn't yet have confidence in the Ethiopian defense forces and that the two um, elephants in the room not mentioned in Pretoria, uh, the Amhara forces and the Eritrean forces um, still occupy um, Tigray and without the Tigray defense forces, um, Tigray wouldn't be able to um, free itself from those two forces or at the very least it wouldn't have any guarantee that they wouldn't uh, further invade um, other places. And I think that point, that line of defense has got some sort of sympathy from the uh, mediator, uh, who I believe is um, Kenyatta, and uh, that is because Obasanjo has now completely left the scene, uh, from what I have heard, and his reasoning is that he has um, achieved um, success, so he doesn't want to be involved in anything that might not go as, as smoothly, according to him. So he doesn't want to kind of um, tarnish his... Um, uh, his extremely elevated um, reputation now. He, he believed that he has um, resolved one of the probably um, trickiest problems in Africa and is in some sort of um, victory lap. Uh, but anyways, a, a couple of options have been discussed in terms of um, disarmament. Uh, what I found interesting is there are also... Um, um, discussing about what they call a, a kind of a modality of um, disarmament. Apparently, it has been used in uh, in other places called cantonment. Um, so, what that means is that because the Tigran, I wouldn't say the Tigran government, because the Tigran government has now kind of agreed to um, to cease uh, to exist. But anyway, the Tigran forces. Because the Tigran forces don't have confidence in the Ethiopian National Defense Forces as of yet, and because of the impending danger posed by the Amharas and by the Eritreans, they want to maintain their defense forces in some way, in some form, in some capacity, but also because the Ethiopian regime has to be satisfied, um, they have to disarm. So a very um, interesting idea of kind of meeting both conditions in what they call the um, cantonment. So what would happen is that there would be some sort of garrison um, in Tigray under the control of a, a third um, non-partisan party. Um, so say the, the AU or uh, maybe other party that they are um, uh, discussing to, to, to agree on. So there would be a garrison and all the, all the weapons at the various, maybe not the personnel, but the weapons would be stored there. So that when and if the Ethiopian forces or the Amharas or the Eritreans did something that breached the agreement, the Tigrans would have access to their um, weapons, to their um, armory and everything. So that is something that they have been discussing for the past couple of days in Nairobi. And um, what I know is that the Ethiopian regime has kind of categorically uh, rejected that proposal, but the Tigran representative is um, pushing for, for that. And uh, the hope is that some sort of common ground uh, might, be, might be achieved um, because the mediator, uh, Kenyatta, does really understand that the, the Tigrans have a point in, in saying that it wouldn't be fair for them to disarm given the complete lack of um, trust between them and the the other kind of allied forces um, that have been devastating Tigran for the past two years. So that is, um, as far as I know, in, in terms of um, uh, disarmament, 
so we'll have to watch uh, this space. There might be some developments um, anytime, uh, I believe. Um, the other the other issue is in terms of uh, humanitarian aid. Um, uh, so here, from Tigran sources, um, nothing has changed, um, nothing of substance at any rate. Um, I think what is happening is the Ethiopian regime is letting some aid trickle into the area that they control. So that would be some parts of um, southern Tigray and um, the entirety of western Tigray. Um, they are doing that to to mollify the, the international observers because the international observers need to kind of tick their boxes. They they, they want to say that all right, the Ethiopian regime is doing what um, is mandate mandated to do according to the agreement, and once they have ticked their boxes, then the Ethiopian government would be kind of entitled to um, to demand uh, the thing that has been that have been withheld from it so aid and funding and all that so that is what the Ethiopian regime is doing and the observers uh, especially the some of you will have seen um, on Twitter uh, um, something that the uh, European Union in Addis Ababa tweeted they they said that they have already um, um, uh, dispersed some some funding for the Ethiopian regime for rehabilitation. Um, that's the insulting to the Tigray people, but for rehabilitation purposes. Uh, so um, that's what's happening in terms of the Ethiopian regime. But from from Tigrayan sources, and uh, here I have I have put something that was tweeted by uh, by a by a prominent Tigrayan activist today that nothing had changed, um, no aid, no nothing to, to grind no food, and that in a, in a lot of places, um, especially central and western to grind, uh, fighting, is, uh, fighting is happening between Eritrean and Ethiopian forces. So um, this is in, in, in blatant violation of the agreement, of course, because according to the agreement, fighting was supposed to have stopped um, immediately after the signing but that hasn't happened Eritrea has continued shelling and looting and uh, and bombarding cities um, and exec um, execution of, of of young people so the the horrendous um, criminality has continued on the part of Eritrea and on the part of um, I believe some forces of, of Amhara in, in southern Tigray especially in al there was uh, maybe now has um, um, uh, subsided for, for for a couple of days, but there were times when they went um, house to house and uh, and shot at people. Um, so, um, in terms of humanitarian aid and um, fighting, nothing has changed. Um, it, it seems, and I actually that this was one of the worries of of people when the uh, when the news of the uh, peace deal emerged. Um, one of the points people raised was that that was going to be um, a, a tool for the Ethiopian regime uh, to to placate its um, international donors and and funders. But otherwise, um, nothing would change in Tigray, uh, and that is what um, it looks like um, is the case. And um, I think um, another interesting point uh, for the past um, seven days is the the reaction from the Tigran um, diaspora. Uh, I think it has it has been one of uh, anger and shock and disbelief uh, that not so much that the TPLF signed uh, the document. I think everybody understands why, and I, I'm going to talk about the why in. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, a little later, uh, but uh, at uh, what the international community has uh, forced the Tigran uh, representatives to, to sign, the, the, the sheer uh, admission of using humanitarian aid to achieve uh, political ends, uh, something that is clearly against international law, uh, but that's what the United States and the AU uh, and um, other observers in the 
in the in the in the peace process um, uh, have accepted as 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 a given. Um, uh, so there was uh, there has been um, and I think a lot of Tigrayans are still in a state of shock and anger and and disbelief that that has been allowed to. Um, that humanitarian aid has been weaponized uh, and in, in, a, in a blatant, uh, in your face uh, way. Uh, and I mean, multiple um, reactions in terms of um, people's suggestions uh, about what the Tigran Defense Forces should do, about what the Tigran government should do. There are people who, who have been saying that the agreement should be um, outright rejected uh, but more and more people are coming to realize that that's not really possible because if the agreement was to be totally rejected by Tigrans then the international community um, such as it is uh, would find an excuse to say that well then you are entirely responsible for the for the suffering in Tigray and there is suffering in Tigray um, We've been hearing that people are literally fainting from 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 hunger, um, all sorts of disease, even diseases that people thought were um, were kind of extinct um, are um, uh, rife now in, in Tigray. Um, malaria, for instance, has returned, and other disease, um, scabies, and, and and all that. Uh, so th there is there is um, there is enormous suffering in Tigray, and the international community has simply told the the, the TPLF, either you accept, uh, you give in, you succumb to whatever we demand of you, or you will be entirely responsible for for the, for the suffering. So um, a lot of people have come to realize that uh, the TPLF didn't have much of an option but to to sign a deal that, in all fairness, is looks like a surrender um, uh, deal. Um, in terms of how the, the actual deal was um, achieved, the, um, um, the hagglings and the, the, the back and forth and the, the tricks and the techniques uh, deployed by, by the United States is actually very, very shocking. Um, there are things that you wouldn't expect a, a self-respecting country um, would uh, would do, uh, but anyways, even according to by the admission of the Ethiopian regime, and um, this was admitted through Redwan Hussein, the the United States had been putting enormous pressure on the TPLF to to sign uh, the deal. Uh, so um, essentially, the, the United States had been telling the TPLF um, what I said earlier, which is that you either, um, you either sign whatever deal we give you, or we're going to um, hold you responsible for the suffering in Tigray. Not just that we're going to designate you as terrorists and we're going to do all sorts of things um, uh, that you wouldn't like. And uh, I think that's what forced the Tigrayan representatives to, to, to sign. They knew that um, the Tigray Defense Force was in a very strong position. They knew that that in due time they, they have the capability to free Tigray, uh, but they couldn't find um, a way around the, the elephant in the room, really, which is the, the suffering, the immense um, suffering in Tigray. But I find it um, beyond uh, shocking that the United States should use that kind of barbaric and dirty uh, trick uh, to force the the TPLF to sign a, a surrender um, uh, document by 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 threatening to withhold any sort of support and not just to withhold but also to hold the Tigran responsible uh, for the suffering causing caused by the international by the a responsibility of the international community and the cruelty of the Ethiopian regime. Um, so that is how the deal has been achieved. And uh, um, those of you interested to know the the exact details, um, I will try to put a a link to the um, uh, to the report. Um, I think it, the report must uh, must be. 
on African arguments, if I'm not mistaken. But it's, um, so the, the reporter cites anonymous uh, diplomats who, who were in attendance. Uh, so it's, uh, it's um, a reliable and authentic uh, account of how the, the deal uh, was forced on, on the Tigran representatives. So uh, this is the current state of play and uh, we will have to watch closely um, uh, how uh, things uh, transpire from, from now. Uh, my own view is that uh, the um, some sort of temporary um, arrangement uh, will be found, but I don't think whatever is going to come from, from Kenya or from Pretoria is going to be um, long-lasting because the Tigrans um, uh, are very, very determined to free themselves um, and to uh, to be in charge of their own um, nation. Uh, and actually, that was um, that was the the sentiment expressed um, um, expressed today by the by one of the political parties in Tigray, the Tigray Independence Party. They issued a statement. Um, today and they they made uh, some very very strong uh, points. Number one, um, they say that Tigray's um, uh, path towards independence is is uh, unstoppable and inexorable, and nothing that Tigrayan representatives were forced to sign in Pretoria is going to uh, put a dent to that. Uh, also, they, they say that they're going to uh, to fight um, in their own way. Uh, what that might look like, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, that is um, the sentiment. And also from, from, from uh, personal connections and conversations, the general sentiment in, in Tigray, if I could um, draw a conclusion from, from a few conversations I had, is that is one of um, or, uh, number one, one of anger, shock, and um, disbelief in terms of um, uh, w how the U.S. forced uh, the TPLF to sign a deal, um, but um, also one of um, a defiance, one of saying that all right, this is a temporary blip, uh, but we're going to um, overcome this problem and uh, eventually. Uh, uh, prevail and and triumph. Um, so uh, thanks for for listening to me. And um, I I promise that when there are some developments, I'm going to um, um, come back and try to give you a, a summary, a digest of of, of main events. Uh, but um, I think um, that it that for, for today. And please, if you haven't. Um, subscribed um, to the channel um, do so we have um, lots of interviews lined up uh, um, that you wouldn't want to to miss so um, don't you forget to 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 um, subscribe and um, um, thank you for for the listen bye bye cheers